Hey everyone, this is Eric with programwitheric.com and today I just wanted to go over how to use the Z shell and use the Powerline status bars. So you've probably seen some people program and their programming environment kind of looks like this. Now I'm using PuTTY here and I'm SSH'd into a, a server. But you can see here I have this nice command line here, different colors. And I'm also using the Z shell so uh, I can use this tab. I can tab between different uh, directories here, which is really nice. I also can anytime just type in the name of a directory. Um, in this case, for blog, I can move to it. I can hit dot dot. I don't even have to put CD. So this is kind of the power of the Z shell here. And some of the auto completion stuff is really neat. Um, one other thing with this command line, this is the command line itself has this breadcrumb association with it so you can easily uh, see where you're at. What's nice about this too is if you go into a directory that let's say has a github or excuse me a git directory. Let's see here I'll use my own go to my component. You can see here it shows at the bottom clear here. You can see the part of the command line, the prompt has master here, and you can actually see that you're on the master branch. If I use vim, I, you can add you can add the z shell or excuse me the power line status bar to your vim as well. So if I open up app.js, you can see here at the bottom, I have my vim shell here open. It tells me some information about the file. It's just really neat. You can see where you are, what percentage, what line number. And this becomes really handy to do a lot of cool stuff. So I went ahead and created a new box, a new DigitalOcean box here. Uh, it has nothing installed. It's just a brand new. It's running Ubuntu 14.04. And I just want to see, show you how you can get started and get your terminal to look like this. So first what we're going to do is we're going to install the oh my Z shell or oh my Zish, depending how you want to pronounce it. And an easy way to do that is to use this sh command here. We'll use curl. And we'll just paste it. And it says please install ZSH first, so we'll do that. Okay, we'll go sudo apt get install ZSH. Yes. And I'm on DigitalOcean here as you can see. Okay, installed it. And now we'll go ahead and we'll see if we can get the cloning. Oh, we got to do a couple of things first. Uh, we have to install a few packages. So let's do sudo app git install git. Now we'll see if it works. Okay, now it's asking me for my password. Great, now it's installed. So now we have the Z shell installed. Now if we can take a look at some configuration here. If we go into well, VI ZSHRC, and this is the uh, this is the configuration. Of it, you can see also there's something called plugins. This is what's cool about all my Z shells. You can uh, we can take a look here. We have this plugins architecture to it, which you have all these plugins available for you, and each one of them can do a certain thing. Like if you have Git, it defaults to Git, but you can you know install npm as well and a few other things. Like now I can go Git dash and I can now look at all the different commands. You can do the same thing for npm and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so it's really handy. I won't go into the plugins for oh my, oh my ZA, Z shell right now, but you can certainly install as many as you want. What we want to do now, though, is we want to make our prompt look like this and install the powerline status bars. So to do that, um, first, we're going to go into our configuration file, and we know there's different things you can do, but we know for sure 
there's one called Agnoster. And that's the one that's going to have the cool power line fonts as the prompt. So we'll do that. We'll source it. This reloads the file. And now you can see it looks kind of funky right here. Didn't really do what we wanted to do. It shows this kind of question mark and tilde, but it doesn't really show what it's supposed to show. It's supposed to kind of look more like this. Let me close this. Yeah, it kind of looks supposed to look like this with this nice breadcrumb and different colors. So first thing we need to do is we need to get fonts. And one great font that really works well is the Deja Vu font. Um, so you can go here, I'll add this to the notes to the episode. But inside here you'll have a bunch of different fonts here. I would just go ahead and download the Deja Sans uh, the normal one, Powerline TTF. You just click View Raw here, it'll just download it. And when you run it, it gives you an option to install. I have already installed it. But then you'll install it here. And what you want to do is then go back to your putty. And you want to go into the settings. And then go into appearance. And what you want to set is to clear type. And you want to change this. And I put it kind of, uh, I have a different color scheme here, but I'll put it, let's say 12 or 14. And then you just select the font. And it's going to show up as Deja Vu Sans Mono for Powerline. And then I just choose what the font style is. I don't want bold or anything, so I'll click Book. Click OK here. You also probably want to double check. It should be by default. But you can take a look if you have remote character set as UTF-8. You want it to be UTF-8. So just apply it. And now you can see we have a, a better looking font here. Uh, it definitely looks like we have... It's working a lot better. So let's make directory test. And you can see... Help. And it sort of looks okay, but let's go ahead and download something from GitHub and take a look at that. Okay, let me go ahead and git clone. And I'll just grab some from my own repository here. And if I go to Phoenix sample app, it shows master, but it doesn't look quite right. You can see here the master is it should be over here in the right hand side, but it's really on the left hand side. And also the colors aren't quite right with our uh, breadcrumb display here, so it's definitely not, uh, apparently it's definitely not installed correctly, even though we got the font installed there. So we need to do a few things to get this up and running. Uh, there's a great, there's a great Stack Overflow or askubuntu.com. It's part of a Stack Exchange that explains how to get Powerline installed in Ubuntu. There's a few ways of doing it, but this seems to be the best way. Um, I'll include this link in the notes below. So let's go ahead and just see if we can get this installed. So it says first we need to install Python and Python pip. So we're going to install these dependencies. And pip is just a kind of a package manager for Python. I, I've, I don't use it. We'll install these. And then we're going to go ahead and install. Now, what seems to work best is the system-wide direction, so you'll need to have root access on your box to do this. But assuming you do, in fact, let me do this real quickly. I don't know if I have, I never set a password for root, so I'll just set one real quickly. And now it's installing pip and everything we need here. So we're going to edit now. the... Let's see if we can just get it working with our shell here. Our Z shell. We're going to have to add this line in. This just point, points to the bindings for it. Uh, another good thing to do is to make sure that we 
set the X term correctly. So we're going to add that here. So now the moment will be revealed here. Let's see if we can, if just by doing that, we can get the correct prompt here. Oh, there it is. So now you can see we have the nice pretty prompt. Now if we want to go, if we change directories to the Phoenix app, you can now see we see master over here, which is good. Now if we want to, let's say we want to add it to also our Vim. So if we go and open Vim up, and we just open up something here, we don't really have anything nice uh, looking here. But we can change that. We can add it to our Vim status line. And so we just need to create a vimrc file. Paste this in here. Now when we go vi, we can see now we have the nice, at the bottom, the nice status line. So if we open up a file, now we can see where we are. We got line numbers, looks really cool. So that looks great. And just for you power, uh, your tmux users out there, uh, so let's sudo app get install tmux. I don't use this. I like screen myself. But it's already installed. It already has the latest version. So if you open up here and you open up the tmux comp file, we can then add in source to where the power lines installed, the bindings, and now if we run tmux, and we quit out of this. Now we have the nice status bar at the bottom, and now we can see here, you can see the different, the different terminals we just created, and we can do everything we want to do here, and split it, and, and work with it. So that's just a little bit about how to set up Powerline and how to get running on your terminal uh, when you're remoting in. The only disadvantage of this is that it can be a tad bit slow. I've seen at times, especially when I'm doing a lot of things, you might see a tiny bit of lag using a colorful con uh, terminal here. A prompt, colorful prompt that is. So that's about it. If you have any questions, leave, leave them uh, leave them in the comments below. Thanks.